Right, so Rockbusters then, we'll get yeah. this out of the way, right? Uh, the so the one. prizes, Carl, I've uh, mentioned there's a number of CDs, we've also got Wild Weather, um, a fascinating, uh, it looks like two VHS set about weather, <laughs> about various weather conditions around the world. That must be selling like hotcakes. Uh, Sean Lloyd could be in that now, yeah, indeed. And, um, also signed by Norman. It's Fat Boy Slim's Big Beach Boutique. That must have been troublesome for, um, the station that, <laughs> that has, uh, you know, close ties with Norman to get hold of, but well done. And, uh, that's Fat Boy Slim, Big Beach Boutique. So, yeah, there's a number of not bad prizes to give away there. And the clues were, Carl? Uh, first one was, uh, my younger brother spotted you the other day. The initials JS. We had, um, that champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. And, uh, Third one, the vibrators. That's rubbish, the, that one. And the initial B. We'll give away the, uh, the prizes and the answers next. Um, yeah. well, we got a play record, or do, what we got coming up? We got Monkey News. Yeah, we got that. We got, uh... Got loads, too numerous to mention at the moment. We got the adverts. Got some of them. Oh, brilliant. Cram them in later. Excellent, look forward to them. Joe Jackson. Good, good track. Good tune. Well, it's on. <laughs> <laughs> Different for girls. Joe Jackson on XFM. 104.9, a retro cut. Um, bit of monkey news would be good, Carl, if you got that. Well, no, no, well we, we're struggling here, we're struggling, Steve. Wait I, a minute. I, 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 really you say that, but wait a minute, the answers for Rockbusters are coming up right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've got people returning <laughs> Oh, we've got, to, oh, what have we done? We've done, take my shoes off for money. Take <laughs> my shoes off for money. <laughs> we've done that, we've done, um, oh, look at these funny postcard breasts. <laughs> and, uh, we've done, we didn't win a Sony. Um, coming up, regular monkey, features. Um, oh, jeez, got, got nothing, have we? Come on, sometimes it's good. Come on, Carl, save us. You've got to save so us. Rock we've done answers. Are we doing them now, Steve? Yeah. yeah, right. Uh, first one. My younger brother spotted you the other day. Yeah. The initials there, JS. That was Junior Senior. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you that. Second one. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. That was AM. That was Alison's Moye. Alison's Moye. <laughs> Alison Moye. Sorry, just one. give us the clue again. That champagne belongs to the boxer's kid. So, Muhammad Ali's son. Yeah. Right, okay. Alison's yeah. Moye. Yeah. Brilliant. And then third one, oh, is a, an easy one in there for everyone to look and set part. Uh, the vibrators, the initials, B. That's Buzzcox. <gasps> you can't say Cox. We that's why we've been more. That's why you can't say Cox. Oh, have we got a winner? We have indeed. Um, I chose him because his name amused me. Um, which is a bit hard. Tell Mr. Tits. No, no, no. Gerald Preston. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gerald. I don't know why that tickled me. It's so oh, unfair. It only tickled me because it's not funny. <laughs> it's There's so nothing unfair. funny with Gerald Preston. There is nothing <laughs> funny. I think well, it was because it sounded like <laughs> it was a man of a different generation. I think that was why it sounded. Gerald Preston. It sounded <laughs> like. <laughs> That's terrible! Right, Gerald, there's nothing funny about that name. There's nothing funny about the name, Gerald. Steve just made me laugh. He <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why that made us funny. It made us laugh, but it just tickled me. Oh, but but <laughs> Daryl, whatever you think of your name, don't worry because these points are including Fatboy Slim. There's nothing funny about Gerald Preston. I don't know, Gerald, if you're a fan of wild weather, <laughs> but you've got a 2 VH set <laughs> coming to your way. <laughs> so you certainly will be interested in extreme weather conditions by the end of that, I would have thought. Plus oh, some arbitrary CDs, oh. so um, good luck, Jerry. Oh dear. Excellent. Um, right, brilliant. Good. That's that sorted. Right, let's have another tune and then maybe some monkey news. Yeah. Well actually, now you've sort of mentioned a bit of monkey news, that I found something in the week, right, that we've talked about in the past, right, that oh, I've got some other monkey stuff, but this is just, oh, forget it. Oh, come on! What? <sighs> come on! What's the matter with you? Right, do you know that thing we did ages ago? What? When, uh, we were out one day and we were talking about monkeys in, in a room with a, with a PC. And if you leave them in there long enough. Yeah, eventually a, 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 an infinite amount of monkeys, or one monkey in an infinite amount of time, will eventually type the complete word of Shakespeare. Yeah. Right, we talked about that ages ago. Yeah. I said it wouldn't happen. No, it, it doesn't make sense. You can't say it wouldn't happen, it doesn't make sense. It's a, a mathematical conundrum. It doesn't anyway, make sense. Go on. Anyway, right. They got a couple of monkeys. Alright, so not an infinite amount then. <laughs> okay, so, alright, but never mind. Yeah. Uh, got a couple of monkeys, put it in a room. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was a, if it was one PC or they got, got a job lot or whatever. Not an infinite amount then. And, uh, <laughs> left them in there for a month. 
Oh, I'm not on the infinite amount of time then, are they? <laughs> okay. So two monkeys a month. Okay, go on. Yeah, I see the experiment's no, working about, so far. About eight monkeys. Oh, eight <laughs> monkeys. Oh, let me just work that out as a, as a fraction of infinity. <laughs> it's one, oh, infinity, <laughs> eight into infinity. Oh, God, uh, um, a month. And what uh, happened then, Carl? Did, did, they they the did they take the complete watch of Shakespeare? I'm assuming they no, did. No, they, 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 uh, no, they only did a proportion of it. <laughs> okay, what they, did they just did Macbeth. <laughs> What happened then, Carl? Please they, tell us. They didn't have anything. They didn't come up with anything. You're an idiot, Carl. Did you really are an idiot. Play a record. That's ridiculous. Well, what did you expect? What did you expect? Yeah, a, bit, a, bit, a bit of Keats. And no, pastry no. of the Radio Times by one of them, the cleverest one. No, but what they did say is they didn't even get- they didn't even write one word out. One- No. You don't- No. Infinity or nothing. That's the point. There's a big leap between any number you could think of and infinity. In fact, an infinite leap. Do you understand the concept of infinity? Don't rub your eyes. I, I, I lost him on do you. Yeah. Didn't I? Right, play a did record. Did they type any- did they type nothing from like any of the book- any of the Tarzan no, books? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but they must have read them. I mean that would be their favourite, surely. <laughs> I'm stunned! <laughs> I can't believe they didn't even do like a transcript of Every Which Way But Loose. Yeah. I can't believe it, they must have chosen some really thick monkeys. They didn't type any of Charlton Heston's speeches from, oh, um, uh, from Planet of the Apes. I can't believe it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. You'd have thought six monkeys in a month would have done something. Yeah. At least a script for BJ and the Bear. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing, of course, with BJ and the Bear that it was a monkey, not a bear. Really? Stuck in a moment. You can't get out of it by you two. I know how they feel. Oh, just a quick thought. I just had a sudden thought. Um, just a little update on something we talked about ages ago on the show. You might remember I said once that um, if I ever met Dido, I thought yeah. I had a good chance with her yeah, because yeah. she looks like the sort of woman that would work in, say, a photocopying shop. Yeah, and yeah. she'd probably be quite charming. Or me a secretary that sort of like wrote a couple of songs. Exactly. And the boss said, put, I entered her in something. Yeah. And it and it won. She did them at the Christmas party. Everyone clapped. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, just an update on that. So far, nothing's happened. You haven't, you haven't, you haven't I haven't met her. Nothing's going no, on, so okay. I'll keep you posted on that, Rick. I know you're interested. I, I, I imagine it's a foregone conclusion when you do, though. It's That's only the beauty of it, is, you know, when, when I hear you met her, you don't need to say any more. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just, just say, you, I'll let just you know. wink and say, I met Dido last night, and I'll yeah. go say no more. Exactly. You, don't, you don't need... <laughs> I'll just look a little bleary-eyed. Yeah. 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 Um, and, uh, probably still wearing the, the same clothes. From the mace. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. Anyway, I just thought I'd keep me abreast of that. Yeah. All the best from London, Carl. Come on, Carl, cheer up. You had, tits, you've had a good Carl. week. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to do a month's notice? <laughs> <laughs> little bit of friction, little bit of friction between Steve and Carl. I think they're, uh, you know, they're getting to each other. Which is, mm. which well, is tr he's underpants for pinching. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carl, cheer up. You're lucky. You know how many people uh, would would. Pay good money to. Carl, you had a good night out this week. You went to the, the Sony, you had a free meal. Yeah, well, that annoyed me. I don't. <laughs> well, we came away empty handed, but. Yeah. It was a good night, wasn't it? You enjoyed that? Did you enjoy that? I ate it, but go on. I'm just finding more and more things are, are annoying me. Really? Like, even. Like, at, the, at that Sony's night, right? You've got a lot of, uh, respectable people going to that thing, you know, people yeah. who are high up at the BBC and that. Yeah. And. Just the way, you know, it's it's a posh night, there's people there with dinner jackets on and stuff. Mm. And then I went to the toilet for a wee. Old fella in there. I thought he looks, he looks like he's been in the, you know, the radio game for years, probably done loads of award winning Sony stuff. Yeah. You know, all the BBC documentaries to do, in depth stuff, and I thought, you know, I wonder if I'll be like him when I'm, when I'm older, I wonder if I'm as good as him. Thinking all that, he's having a wee in the next urinal. Farts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. He just farts. <laughs> <laughs> Old fella in a dinner jacket, probably hired. And I but thought he's like, like they, they, they try to, they think, well, I better do it in here. And it's sort of like a trumpet. And uh, everyone everyone just goes, yeah, it's fine. What's up with that? You know, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Is it it's just the arrogance of doing he it? He just did it. Uh, it was it sounded like a, a lost whale. <laughs> 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 and, and he didn't sort of go and try and clinch it. It went. It carried on, and then he went. Oh, that was a good one. Really, old fella must have been about seventy. Oh dear. And what well, better out than in? Yeah. But it's not though. I wasn't. I was. I wasn't brought up like that. You see. Right. Because I did it. I mean, I never really did it that much as a kid. <laughs> sure. And then I was at my mum and dad's. You never. Sorry, you never did it that much as a kid. What farted? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Not, not just like, mm. you know, as a joke and that. Yeah. We are taping this for next year's Sony Award, aren't we? We're taping this, what we're talking about now, aren't we? Mm. To hand in. Cause this is, go on. But I was at, at my mum and dad's, right? And, uh, Suzanne was sat on the floor in front of me and she was like, oh, rub me neck, it's hurting. So I thought, oh, and I hate doing that, it really do it bores me. Well, right? she's your girlfriend, for goodness sake. I know, yeah. Dad went and different, you're getting paid for that, go on. So I thought, the only way to shift her is I'll let one go, right? So I did that. <laughs> I love that! It's such a loving relationship. <laughs> That's great! Uh, so like so doing the washing up badly. Yeah. She won't ask me again. What have you done? I've smashed the cups up <laughs> and I've written, <laughs> written in excrement across the wall. <laughs> well that's no good, isn't it? Yeah. Well I won't do it again then. Give me the marigolds, I'll do it. I've nailed the cat to the fridge, what's <laughs> up with that? Yeah. Go on. But yeah, so, so I did that and it worked. She sort of got up and said, oh. And my dad said, what, what do you do that for? Yeah. <gasps> what was he thinking? So I said, oh, I, I, hate, I hate rubbing a neck. Doesn't he head in? So he says, you know, I've never trumped in front of your mother <laughs> for forty years. Sorry, where was this? Chigley? Why is this family talking like this? <laughs> yeah. Um, I've young never... Carl, I've never trumped in front of your mother in the thirty-five years. <laughs> why you'd- why- what- I don't know what- No, it's just- it's just that he said, you know, we- we've done a lot of things in the family that Hold on, what- what did he say that for? What, he's never- he's never trumped in front of your mother? He just offered that information up. Well, he, he just was surprised that I did it. He said, where have you got that from? Yeah. Well, you, you, you lower intestines, I thought. We do, of course, Rick, every week get thousands of emails. I mean, it's Fred Egan from Winchester says, uh, of course, it was recently Valentine's Day. What's the most romantic thing that you've done for Suzanne, Carl, that you can think of? Uh, I, I don't really do all that. So, uh, Valentine's Day stuff. It's just, the problem is, if you do it once, they expect it every year. Yeah. That's, sure. that's the problem with Christmas and stuff, innit? It's like, it's become, that's what you do now, every yeah. year. <laughs> every day, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I prefer to just sort of wait, do you know what I mean? And, and, you know, if I think of an idea or I know of something that she wants, I might get her something, but I might not do it on Valentine's Day, it's that thing. It's like how I've, I've said about Pancake Tuesday. <laughs> Make it Pancake Wednesday. Have it when you want. Why yeah. am I waiting? Why am I waiting for someone to tell me when I can have a pancake? I'll have it today if I want one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? As Pancake Tuesday, no, I won't bother. I'll have trifle. So, <laughs> so it's the same, same with this, you know, with Suzanne. Um, luckily, right, I mean, Valentine's Day and what have you, she was, uh, she was ill. Luckily. So, we didn't, we didn't have to go out. So, I'd say, is he asking for advice? Well, I suppose, yeah, certainly you may as well give it. Treat them when they deserve it. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> all right. I remember, uh, once when Suzanne was ill, she had a fever, but there was no, Food in the house. What did you suggest to her? She was too ill. Well, to cook. it was it was when we were still living in Manchester and that, and uh, you know uh, we needed to get some food in for tea and stuff. And uh, I said, "Come on, come to the supermarket." She was like, "No, I'm ill. You go." And I ate buying food. I just sort of get a bit blank when I'm looking at it. It's too much, isn't it? That's the problem. You go down all these aisles and it's just too much. <laughs> so anyway, I said, "No, come on, come with me." She was like, "Oh, but I've got this fever. I'm hot and everything." So I said, well, come to the supermarket, you go on the frozen aisle, cool yourself down. <laughs> <laughs> and she did, and she said, she, you know, it made it worse, she was ill for another three days. How would you, uh, go about chatting up a woman in a bar? What, what tips could you give? Um, I've, I've never, I've never worked like that. It's always been like a friend of a friend and all that, and just happened to meet them. And then, you know, you have a chat, and then... How did you meet Suzanne? Uh, that was when, uh, I was working with her. And, uh, she gave me 20p for, uh, the hot chocolate machine. She never asked for it back. I thought she's alright. <laughs> um, been there sort of 11 years, so it works. Has she ever given you that, uh, she ever, have you, have never you ever, you've never given that 20p she's never back? never asked for it back. And did you return the favour, perhaps on the next date? Uh, did you buy her a Kit Kat or something? No, I don't think I did. I think, I think word got out that, um, she liked me and that. And, um, what did I do? I think I did some work for her, did some editing for her, to sort of show off my skills and that. <laughs> sure. And she was like, oh, you're good at this, aren't you? I was like, yeah. And I think she got us another drink, because I was, I was doing that editing for her, in my own time. So you're up. You're up on the deal, aren't you? Because I, I know now, I know for a fact, you've not spent any money on her in 11 years, so you are, you're 40p up. <laughs> At least. Lawrence from New York says, I was wondering how Mr. K. Dilkington would interpret this famous saying of philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein. The quote is, if a lion could talk, we could not understand him. 
Even if he's English. Yeah, if he- <laughs> yeah, if a lion could speak English, so there's no language barrier, he's speaking English words and using uh, all the correct, uh, grammar and everything, but you wouldn't be able to understand what he was saying. Why? Because it is from a different world. His frames of reference would be so bizarre that you wouldn't be able to get a grasp on what he was talking about, because you'd have so little in common, even if he used real words. No, but he's talking English. Yeah, no, but his reference points would be just so far removed. You know, they're removed slightly when, uh, uh, if you saw two people talking about Kierkegaard, you'd un- you'd- you'd- I hear- won't understand that. Exactly. So remove that a billion times to a different species with different input. No, but it depends. If I'm talking to a lion in London Zoo, Yeah. He'll- he'll be saying, oh, I'm fed up with being stuck in here. I'll go, yeah. It's like that- oh, it depends what his background <laughs> is. I mean, there's some people who might have lived down the road from me, but have a totally different life. Absolutely. So, it doesn't matter that it's a lion, does it? Well, yeah, because they're just trying to remove it even more. So, so now it's not just a bloke who lived a few doors away, now it's not even a bloke. Now it's not even- Yeah, but I'd- a, I'd pick something smaller. Yeah. Or, right. or something, you know, a worm without a mouth, they'd go, definitely not. <laughs> what? Definitely, Definitely not, not what? what? I wouldn't be having a chat with it. I just- I just think that a worm that's- that's underground, yeah. what's it got to offer me? <laughs> it's- it's blind and it hasn't got a mouth. It's not gonna be a good day out with it, is what I'm saying. It's not gonna have that much to say to me, even if it's English. Right? <laughs> even if it's English! And how can you tell if a worm is English? Is it wear a very tiny bowler hat? <laughs> oh, Christ. But do you understand- What about a jellyfish? No, I, you see, I think that's where you, you can- you can say you wouldn't be able to have a good chat with them, because, to me, the sea might as well be another world. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, in a way, I, I think the fish, sort of, have more rights than us. What do you mean? Just because, when- when whoever made the world, right, yeah. say, you know, we were just bigging up God, but if yeah. I was- was to have a go at him, yeah. I'd say, you added too much water. <laughs> Criticism one to God, right? right. So, <laughs> you, how would you have changed that? Just, just more land. Fair enough. Now, why, why, are the, why have fish got more rights than us? That because, was because, interested. because there's loads of them, and when you look at the amount of sea on the world, right? There's, there's loads of that. You only have to like, like you know, I was in Malaga the other week, right? And, you know, you look in the sea, there's loads of different fish, uh, and that's just in like eight foot water. If you go miles out, there's like all sorts of weird fish, isn't there, with like lights on them and everything. So, and there's just millions of different types. Yeah. Yeah. Now... <laughs> but why does that mean they've got more rights than us? Just because I think, wh you know, rights come in, in numbers, don't they? If you know what I mean. Like, if there's one of you shouting, people go, oh, he's an idiot, shut up, whatever. If there's loads of you shouting, they go, oh, best listen to him, see what they've got to say. Right. And, and that's what I mean about fish. <laughs> yeah. There's loads of fish. Right. So... But they're not really making their voices heard though, are they, Carl? Yeah. I know, because they're underwater. <laughs> but what- but what I mean is, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, right, what- what do you think it's like being a crab? If you- if you could go now, your mind, into a crab, what would you see? Where would you be? What would you be doing? What would you be thinking? What do you think of all the other things, the crabs you'd see, the- the- the squids you'd see? What- what- what's it like, do you think? I want you to- it's like creative writing, just think, just let yourself go. Come on. Uh, it's gotta be a crab. What do you think of a slug? What do you think to be a slug? What would you do if you were- if you were transported now into a slug, what would you do? And you- and Suzanne, you're suddenly in the kitchen, but you're a slug, and Suzanne's sort of like there, just making tea and that. How do you let her know I, it's I, you? It's impossible. I'd just chuck myself into the salt pot or something. <laughs> no, because what- what do you do? I'd- I'd hate that. I'd hate, that would be horrible, that. <laughs> oh, God! Have you ever read, uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis? Not in which a man so. wakes up and he's turned into a giant beetle? And that's the, yeah, that's the whole story. Uh... I think it might be of interest to you. So what happened to him with the beetle? 
Well, I don't want to ruin it for you in case you no, read it. I won't but be it's, reading it, don't worry. He joined a pop group with three other people. He was brilliant. No, it's a really wonderful book. It's a kind of almost heartbreaking because, of course, he, uh, he does, like Ricky's saying, he finds it very hard then to relate to other people, even though he still has the consciousness of a human. You know, his parents, his re rest of his family, they don't know how to deal with him, you know, because he, he's a giant beetle. He becomes a freak, he becomes an outsider. It's a terrible, you but, know. But hang on, though. Is he a giant beetle? Or yeah. is he. Well, yeah, well, that's not going to go down well, is it? <laughs> That's, that course people aren't gonna like you. But if it's a normal sized one, then you just get in with the other beetles, don't you? <laughs> Whereas if you're but a you'd giant- be sort of How would you do that? How would you ingratiate yourself? Right, so you're suddenly a beetle, you're Carl Pilkington, right? There's other people, they're doing their business, they're scuttling around. And you go, you go in there and you go, and they go, they look at you as a new beetle. What, what's your first, what do you do? How do you ingratiate yourself? Well, for a bit, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sort of barge in into their house and that. I'd, I'd wait until they're out and about. And I'd, I'd like, like in life, right? Um, sort of help them out. I don't know what beetles do all day. I've never seen one doing anything. They just seem to be going from one place to another. Right. I've never seen them carrying anything. I don't know what they eat. I don't know what they do. <laughs> I don't know why we've got them, right? But what I mean is, I'd watch them and I'd sort of help them out. And I mean, you know, it's like going on a date or meeting a woman, isn't it? But what if you there is? Whoa, a beetle, hang on. What do you mean? What, what, how is it like going on a date with a woman? Well, it's like I said about Suzanne with her hot chocolate. She bought me that and I've gone, she's all right. Right. right? She gets me another one before I know it, she's living with me. <laughs> so, it's, you So you're, 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 all these, these beetles, they're scrubbing around, right, you're sort of like watching them and there's, and then you realise that you want to mate with this female beetle. What do you do? What's your first move? Yeah, but I don't know what beetles do, do I? So I don't know how, how what you do. I don't know if you go up and go, all right. What do they do? How do they get on? Whoa! It's a different world. I, I don't know yet, do I? Because they haven't done it. Would you feel bad? Because having your own mind in this beetle, right? Would you feel bad shagging a beetle? Would you feel that that was, that was a bit sick? Because you've got a human mind. Well, no. Because you just close your eyes and that, don't you? Think of something else. So get round it that way. There's no point getting down about it because I'm stuck now as a beetle. So you've got to <laughs> get on with it. <laughs> but if you're a slug, you said you'd throw yourself in the salt pot. What would you do if you're a beetle if you got depressed? And you see all the other humans. No, you see your mates, right? They got they're listening to the iPod. What would you do? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Though beetles are different because they mm -hmm. do tend to hang about with each other. A slug's always on its own. <laughs> it's a lonely insect, isn't it? It's, it's not an insect. All right, what is it? A mollusk. Right, they're lonely. I've never seen a load of snails all together or <laughs> slugs wandering about. Those beetles <laughs> seem to knock about in crowds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, oh God! Okay, all right, another one. So they're sociable creatures, and it wouldn't bother you that you're that you've got the mind of Carl Pilkington in there, because uh, you can't communicate with these people. Because they don't speak English. They don't. They don't have any communication with you. Yeah, but if it's happened to me, there'll be another one in there. Okay then. Right. Okay. Mainly. Well, can I just? I noticed someone's emailed here a link for. Can you believe you like Carl? Monkeys for sale. Now, I don't endorse this in any way, but here you are, here's a monkey for sale here. Oh, that's terrible. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Um, it says, male, very smart little guy, yeah. loves to play and gives kisses, yeah. wears diapers and clothes, yeah. has been around lots of people and loves them, healthy and loves to eat. It's dear, Sounds though, like it? Ricky. How much is that? Well, it wasn't Carl, it says, it loves to be around people. Yeah. There's a gibbon there. A given for it's too pricey uh, though. It's like that uh, Donald McIntyre program he did, that Cheapest Chimps program. He didn't do Cheapest Chimps. He oh. didn't do a program mm. called Cheapest Chimps. He's saying that, but well, he didn't. Mm. There's that no point. Did Donald McIntyre do a program called Ch Play Record? A minute, Play Record. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Carl, um, we're talking about having kids and stuff. I've always been quite thankful that Ricky's never wanted to have kids because um, I just think he would set the worst example for a child that he possibly. <laughs> could do. Um, just in conversation the other day, just happened to mention that he's taken to eating in the bath. Yeah, well, let me explain to Matt. Let me explain to Matt. Right. Um, I've got busy schedules. Yeah. <laughs> I get up, I, I meet Steve at a certain time, then I go, oh, I've got to go at 3.30 today, Steve, I'm working out at four, I work out at four till five, I have to have something to eat before I go out and often meet Johnny for a beer at six or something or go somewhere. So, I thought, oh, God. Um, if I go around and have a bath straight after, then I have something to eat. I go, well, I've got, uh, sometimes there's chicken legs, right, and they're greasy. So one day I thought, hold on, I'll go to the bath with the chicken legs, I'll eat them in the bath, and it's brilliant. So I'm sitting in the bath, I eat the chicken egg, it's really greasy, right? I just throw it in the bin, go under the water, come up, I'm clean. <laughs> I've eaten 
I'm clean, I get dressed, I go out and meet Johnny. I've lined my stomach, and the good thing about that is that when I come home, a few beers, and uh, I've eaten the chicken, I go, there's the only bread left, I just wipe it round the bath, I've got a lovely bread and dripping sandwich. That's not true, that bit. But I do, I do, I do eat in the bath. I mean, I, I, the second week of doing it, I was just eating in the bath. I was eating, I think I was in chicken legs again. I'm eating in the bath. Jane walked past, just looked in at me, and she went, Christ, Caligula. Well, just me, a fat Roman emperor eating. <laughs> Caligula, to be honest, is just too cool and <laughs> impressive. Not Caligula, old man Steptoe. <laughs> Have you seen the one where he's in the bath eating the pickled onions? No. He sat in the bath, he literally sat in the bath, <laughs> eating some pickled onions, some of them slip under the water, he fishes them out, put them back in the jar. I'd never do that. No, you well, you'd eat them. <laughs> you would never know. You, you, you wouldn't let food no. go by like that. But it's so. Uh, but it's the fat, it's chicken, it's big, greasy slabs of chicken. Yeah. You're throwing the bones on the floor. No, I'm <laughs> putting for, them for in the wolves to scavenge. <laughs> I'm putting them in the bit. Stop biting your nails, Carl. Not only can you hear it, it's really rude. I don't know. I, what. Yeah, you're criticising him. Yeah, criticising him for biting his nails. Yeah, you don't know where they've been. You eat chicken in the bath and then <laughs> go under the water and come up clean, whilst sat in some water swimming with grease <laughs> and fat <laughs> and chicken yeah. bones yeah. <laughs> and breadcrumbs. <laughs> well, I like to bath. I like to bath like I, I, two I, or three times a day. Think, but do you not see why that's not cool and impressive? It's not like we're all going to go. Why haven't we all thought of that? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, though, Steve, that is the only time I eat oranges. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, that is, that, that's, I, I've always thought that, an orange, I go, oh god, this is too annoying and I don't bother. I don't bother eating oranges, unless I they're tangerines, you can peel them in one and put them in in one. I do not, I don't have big jaffas, there's just not, it's not worth it. What is wrong with you? you wh firstly, have you ever thought about cutting an orange into four quarters with a knife? Waste. What do you mean a waste? More washing up. <laughs> Yeah, right, so, so this is what you got. this is why you can sleep at night. Cause you think, well, I gotta run a bath and have an orange. I haven't got time. I'd love an orange now, I need the vitamin C, but I gotta run a bath for it, at least have a shower. I'm gonna be in there with another man. Oh, oh it's dear. It's like, you, the two of you are just, you, you are like children. You're infants. Your mentality <laughs> is ludicrous. And you're embarrassing us in front of our special guests. Oh yeah. I uh, can't believe it. Now of course last week we've had, tattoo, eh? we've had a number of letters, Rick, I'm just reading them now, saying okay. last week loved your interview with Chris Martin from Coldplay. Yeah. Gene Yes, another one here. Great insight into the man who wrote Yellow and <laughs> Clocks. Yeah. Fascinating. Uh, yeah. Steve Merchant's interview with uh, Chris Martin was amazing. He showed his own TV show. Yeah, Just yeah. some of the letters we've received for it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. this week, we're very lucky to have with us uh, Russian pop act Tattoo. Round of applause Hi. for them. Hello. Lovely to have them here. Uh, Tattoo. Now then, of course, yeah. there's been much contra- be much controversy that your kind of lesbian shtick is mm. just something to try and whip up some um, press attention. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is we, are, <laughs> we are we are proper lesbians. We uh, we love Fanny more than cock. <laughs> okay, brilliant. And uh, tattoo, lovely to have you. Yeah, um, yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, now then, uh, you've got uh, you've got some live gigs. I understand plan. Yeah. Duh. Okay. I can't help but notice that you sound, dare I say it, Tata, you don't sound so much Russian as German. No, yeah, we cannot do the accent properly. From okay. <laughs> and, uh, Tata, it's a joy to have you. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, um, no, and are. finally, no, uh, your lesbians, could, would, for instance, either myself or Carl be able to convert you yeah, from yeah, the lesbian yeah, yeah. ways? We, we like the muff so much that the knob is no good for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks very much, Tattoo. Yeah, thanks, Tattoo. Thanks very much. Cheers. Yeah. Um, extraordinary. Ne so next week, share. Brilliant. So if you've got any guests, <laughs> special guests you love us to interview, uh, then let us know. Which is Dr. Vance at xfm.co.uk. And we'll try and get there. Oh, dear. Play with Carl. Rockbusters answers next. I was going to say, well, do you want to do that? No, let's do it next. All after right. the after well, the record. I was going to say something. <laughs> what were you going to say? <laughs> About gays and that. What? In a bit. What were you going to say? Well, we'll look forward to that. <laughs> Martina Topley Bird. Need one on XFM 104.9. Right, there goes the girls from Tattoo. See you later. Well Thanks, done. Thanks, girls. Cheers. Have right, a couple of Carl, there. um, what were you saying before we cut you off? Um, yeah, it's just like, you, you know, you had the girls in and that, and it reminded me, I was talking to <laughs> Steve in a week. Yeah. Um, I, th I think, I think it's, uh, when people were talking about going to string fellas and that. Yeah. I was talking about seeing Naked people. Ah, no, I, yes, I asked him, I said, when he used to watch, uh, say, if he accidentally flipped onto BBC Two and some ballet was on, would his eye ever been drawn to maybe the gentleman's lower <laughs> region <laughs> rather the than the ladies? The gentleman's package? Yeah, would, would your eyes ever be accidentally drawn to that and you couldn't resist it? And Did you said, and you said, yes. Yeah, 
because, right? Oh I don't dear. Think I'm, uh... Oh dear. Well, go on. I mean, fair enough. No, all right. I'm, I'm always looking at the beautiful ladies, but, but fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, go on. But. Right. Have I went, you ever looked at Wayne Sleep's testicles? I went. I went out. Have you ever looked at Wayne Sleep's uh, penis and testicles? I went out on a night out, right? And it was some. Uh, it got to some point in the night where two women mm. and two fellas got on the stage. Right. Right. Uh, started stripping off. Yes. Mm. Just yeah. what members of the audience? No, no. I think they were like part of the act, right? Right. And uh, what was his panto? They down the you know the fellas were had like their undies on and the and the girls just had the knickers on yeah right <laughs> and, uh, sounds pretty erotic at the moment gone and at the same time they all whip the pants off yes right yeah. it's Bucks Fizz wasn't it the the, <laughs> the adult show now I said to Steve at that point sorry I wasn't there he said it's to me later <laughs> yeah yeah I yeah. said well you have a you have a quick glance at the fellas and then the annoying thing was. You sort of, I thought, right, now I'll have a look at the women, and it was too late, they put the knickers on. <laughs> How long were you looking at the feathers? Not that long, but- But why were like you looking at them first? <laughs> uh, it's human nature, isn't it? Why? I don't know, but I'm sure you would have done the same thing. You just, you why? just sort of think, well, how, how, how are they shaping up? <laughs> so I it's, a, it's a comparative test. So what was the, what was the, who had the biggest knob? Who had the, which one of the blokes had the biggest knob? No, they were, they, it's like, you know, normal. <laughs> but, I, I, that's, this that's is all. A, this is a whole new side of you. This is a whole other area. So you look at ball ballet dancers, you look at the gentlemen's No, I don't. Package. I just was, when he said this, it <clears> reminded <throat> me of this night when I was walking home thinking, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Didn't, didn't get a look. Because I was messing Where around. was this? What, what <laughs> event was this where people are stripping off? Carl, <laughs> I'll tell you what. You are the most interesting man I have ever met. When it, where is this information? I wouldn't have known that. I might have gone around, you know, with, uh, you know, if it was hot weather, yeah. know, something to mop my brow, I would have known that. Like, what, can't the gay people kind of notify us? Can't I know. we have some kind of website or something well, we can the, check Do you still out? go to that pub with all those sort of, like, butch blokes? Lovely with, um, guys. With the uh, moustaches and, yeah. yeah. the caps, great guys. A lot of them are firemen, a lot of them are, like, traffic cops. Great people. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, you know you're safe in there. Yeah, it also, yeah. there's no women to, no, 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 it's like you're just having a great time with the lads and there's nothing, it's Just playing pool strip to your waist. <laughs> yeah! I can talk. Oh, yeah. my back's still hurt. <laughs> okay, yeah, a little bit of hip-hop. It's nice to have, uh, occasional hip-hop tune, just keep it, you know, it's, it's some, yeah, uh, yeah, you'll be yeah, cruising yeah, around yeah, in your yeah. open-top shed. Now, Steve, I see there it's a track by Little Kim, but how are you pronouncing it? I'm pronouncing that correctly, Lil Kim. Oh, no T's involved. And it's the jump off featuring Mr. Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I find that funny, <laughs> but Mr. Cheeks is involved. <laughs> if you can spot him, good luck. <laughs> Uh, I believe that's Mr. Cheeks there. <laughs> just, uh, just busted it on the mic. And that's called the jump off. Talking of Cheeks, Carl, have we got another instalment of Cheeky Freak of the Week this week? Yeah. Have we? <laughs> Excellent. Look forward yeah. to that. Is there some monkey news? Goes without saying. Of course. Really, saying. really, with that monkey news is safe, isn't it? It's not like, uh... You're always going home with monkey news. You know it's there. Yeah. It's like um, songs of praise on a Sunday. I uh, when I came back on holiday, I've been on holiday for a week, and, uh, I sort of sat him by the pool and stuff, and I sort of wrote about a 40 minute stand up with a new, the, my new yeah. show, and I was going to the car and said, It's great when you get away, it's sort of like, you're relaxing, you just, you just think clearly. He went, I know, I know, I know. He said, I was away when I came up with Rockbusters. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Absolutely. I was buzzing about writing 40 minutes of brand new stand up. Yeah. He equated that to coming up with Rockbusters. Should I be insulted, Steve, or is Rockbusters as good as everyone's saying it is? <laughs> <laughs> is um, it is it the one good idea? Is it like EMC e equals MC squared was to Einstein is to you know Rockbusters is to Carl? What if I do this, Rick? What if we if I played you some adverts right now? Yeah, and then we, we came back it. with some Rockbusters. Yeah, you could you could make the judgment oh, yourself. Maybe I'll do Rockbusters and show people how easy it is to do it wrong. <laughs> Adverts, then rock busters. And a cup of lovely coffee. Cup of coffee in the pub. Yeah, cup cup I want a cup of coffee. <laughs> Placebo. This picture, XFM. What's Carl doing? What's he rooting I around there? But listen, while he's doing that, can I just say uh, happy birthday from all of oh, us to, uh, oh, yeah. to Shan. Her friend Terry said uh, play some placebo for uh, Shan, so happy birthday well, to that's her. Done. That's, that's done. That's done. Cross that off the list. Yeah, that's another thing we've got through Ding. today. Rockbusters, please. Do you want to, um, 
Look at the prizes. I'll have a look at the prizes, see what people uh, can win. It's an email only competition, please remember that. All right, we've got the uh, Later with Jules Holland uh, Louder DVD. There's stuff on there from the Cardigans, Rollins is on there, Mercury Rev, Sonic Youth, the Datsuns, Queens of the Stone Age. Oh, no, wait a minute. They're all great bands, but I think they need a boogie woogie piano at the top of everything <laughs> they do. Well, it's... hopefully Jules Holland would have. Uh, okay, helped. good, good, yeah. good, good. Because that, that was something missing there on most of those tunes. Yeah, current album from Goldfrap, that's there as well. What have we got this on DVD, The Life of Mammals, the complete series? of that. A couple of, uh, we've got the Inspiral Carpets. Again, a three CD set of the best of the Inspiral Carpets. I don't know how they strung it over three CDs. <laughs> um, the best one hit wonders in the world ever. <laughs> And, um, let me see. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, a three-CD yeah. set. A three-CD The set. best of Inspiral. I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm assuming CD3 is just the Corals album. <laughs> Anyway, that's some, some good tweets there. You've sourced, oh sourced some dear. good stuff this week. All right. Well, uh... All right. Yeah. Here's, here's All your right. Here's your rock yeah. All right. Uh, cryptic Cloof, a well. couple of initials, and, uh... And you sort that out. Right. <laughs> uh, first what one... What was Dr. Fox on about that we don't... We don't sound like proper presenters. It's, strange, isn't it? uh, it's mad. Go on, Carl. Right, the first one. Uh, a customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. Shop assistant knew what to do. Right? Customer wanted some paint to darken up a room. The shop assistant knew what to do. The initials there, C B, right? C B. C B for the oh, first right. one there, right? Uh, second one, it'd be all right if uh, if their heads weren't that big, right? And again, it would be all right if their heads weren't that big, and that's uh, S F. Right? S F. Yeah. And the last one. I know that. I know right. that one. Yeah, go on. And the last one. Uh, Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O, right? Chanel, I've got another perfume out. N O. You email in Ricky dot Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk. That's that done. And those prizes can be yours. Yeah. More music, please. Bit of uh, Bob Marley. Are any of these going to annoy me? Oh, I've got to stir it up. Yeah. Brilliant. Are any of these clues going to annoy me this week? No, they're all good. Are they really? Yeah. Right. right so Rockbusters. Uh, Rockbusters number one was about a customer who wanted some paint. Wanted to darken up a room. The shop assistant knew what to do. What did she do? The initials were CB. Cellar Black, right? S cellar Black. Cellar some you black. You see, paint. I thought Cellar Black because it's CB, and I thought, well, it can't be because it's not Cellar. It's not Sell Her Black. Cryptic, it's cellar. cryptic, though, isn't it? No, no, cryptic doesn't mean it's wrong. Uh, they all <laughs> got it. They all got it anyway. So it's a bit weird, isn't it? Uh, second one. It would be all right if the reds weren't that big, right? Right. The initials uh, are SF. Well, well uh, one of my favourite bands, yeah. Yeah. The the smaller faces, isn't yeah. it? Small uh, faces. Well, no, that doesn't make sense. Okay, go on then. Uh, and the final one, uh, Chanel, I've got another perfume out. Right. I'll just say, we've had an email from one of our uh, listeners who said, if this turns out to be new order, he's never listening to XFM again. What's, what's, the, what's the, the clue again? Chanel. I've, I've got another perfume out. N new odour. Right, well that's another listener gone. Alright. Yeah, yeah we'll be a judge of that. Alright. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Brilliant. Stir it up. Bob Marley on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Wait, did you get up today and just see the great weather and think, do you know what, I'd love to hear some stir it up from Bob Marley. Yeah, yeah, yeah? I did actually. Well, I was going to play it last, uh, the week before last, before I went away, and we didn't, we didn't have time. So, uh... Well, we were crammed full of features, like this one. Have we got a cheeky freak of the week? Do you want one? Yeah. yeah. Let's, let, I think we should have a jingle for this. Okay, I've got, I've, uh... Yeah, I've got a jingle. It's very similar to Chimpanz... Ch Chimpanz that. Yeah. Well, let's hear it, let's hear it. Okay. Oh, cheeky freak of the week. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, no, I think that's excellent. So, cheeky okay. freak of the week. You've spotted a this freak... This is where... One? This is where somewhat, I think, offensively, you pick on someone who's, who's not like other people and say it's your favourite freak of that week. Yeah, I remember we had the woman whose uh, legs look like the hind legs of a dog. Um, we've had the little fella with the ageing disease with the little head playing the piano. That's, that was your favourite. I think that's your probably freak of the year, isn't it? It's a pretty so, good one. So wh wh what, what, what's this? Is it a man um, with a, a horrendous injury or is it a congenital um, birth defect or what? Yeah, but you put it like that and now it sounds like I'm being tight. It sounds like I'm being out of order. But I'm just giving them a mention. <laughs> 
Just giving him a big shout out. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's uh. quite a lot going on in the freak world. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, you've, what, you've been visiting hospitals the last week, have you, when we were away? No, there was a, there was a thing on, the, on a website. This isn't even the one that I've picked, so... So this is just a bonus? This is a bonus freak. Please, yeah. Yeah, go on yeah. in. Uh, this is a free freak. It's a fella called a Lobster Man. <laughs> the Lobster Man, of course. <laughs> Again, good name, you know what you're gonna get. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what are you gonna get? He's some, got... some succulent meat. I like the idea with... that... I like the idea that the vicar on the christening suggested that. <laughs> I know you want to call him Mark. Can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yeah. Look at his hands. What's his name? Uh, Mark Michael uh, Webster. Right, um, right. Uh, yeah, have, have <laughs> you thought about a nickname? Not really, no. Have you got no, his hands? hands? Yeah, it, we, we don't want to talk about that because Do it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like quite- Do they look a little bit like lobsters? Well, yeah, but it's quite deformed. It's a, like, you know, we can't- Can I suggest lobster man? <laughs> That's terrible, Vicar. <laughs> that is terrible, Vicar. We're- Pitchy. <laughs> Go on, then. Huh? We're gonna, gonna see. This is what the sort of feature you come up with, Carl. So, Lobster Man. There's probably people listening now with, you know, lobster feet. Right. Lobster hands. So, um... Squid Boy. <laughs> so, Lobster Man, what does, uh, what does Lobster Man do? Does he uh, fight crime? Not that much. Okay. Apparently he got into a bit of trouble. He was in a restaurant and, uh, this was years ago, by the way. And someone picked him to eat him? No, so yeah. the, apparently yeah. the waiter, uh, said, oh, you shouldn't be sat here, you should be in me up my pan or something. Oh dear. And it, uh, they had a fight, got out of hand. Yeah. Got out of, got out of claw. And, uh, yeah, yeah, so that, that was- What do you mean they had a fight? What did, what, what, I mean, what did a, he do? A waiter took the mickey out of someone yeah. with- No. No, no. Can I just make clear? I'm assuming it's his hands look a bit like those of a lobster. Yeah. Yeah, well, they're, they're fused, so it's just like two big fingers. They're right. fused, I assume, probably in the womb, and they're just like, instead of like having yeah, five yeah, digits, yeah. they're fused and it. But it, well, he can pick stuff up, can't he? Yeah. What does he pick up? He mainly eats crabs and jellyfish, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was having a fight with the waiter, he, he snipped off his nose. <laughs> Right, so anyway, he just he just held on to the waiter's bib, yeah, and the exactly, waiter was yeah. screaming, "Go and get him off me!" Yeah. So yeah. anyway, does he eat other lobsters? Does he? <laughs> does he think he would eat lobster, right, um, or is it kind of? <laughs> uh, would he feel bad about eating lobster? Right. The, the little cheek of the freak that we've gone for, anyway. <laughs> the what? The little uh, freak of the week, yeah. cheeky freak of the week. Mm. We've gone for um, this Siamese lad. Okay. Right. Happened back in. Uh, you can't have a Siamese lad, can you? All right. Yeah. This Siamese twins, uh, happened back in 1693. Oh, he's got a date, blindness, first time ever. Yeah. Um, and all it was, he was, he was doing all right for himself. He, he used to go on the, like, those circus things he used to do. They're two people you're talking about, Carl. So we're going to him. All right, then. All right. They. They, they did this circus show, right? Yeah. And, uh, everything's going well. They, they, you know, they're, they're selling out the tents and stuff, people coming to see them. Yeah. Um, he was doing alright for himself. Yeah. Right? Did, um, sorry, before I said that, did you think the Siamese twin was a man with two heads? Well, it can be, can't it? It depends. There there is, there's, there's, there's two man. people, they're conjoined. No, 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 but it depends, doesn't it? The one that I've shown you in that book that time was a fellow with two heads. No, it wasn't. That was, that was a, 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 was a, f uh, a stupid picture in one of your stupid books that he had a growth that looked a little bit like it had a face on it. It wasn't a man with two heads. You're the same sort of people who send potato chips to Esther Ranson and say, doesn't it look like Norman Cook? Yeah. It's not two heads. <sighs> we'll bend this feature. No! <laughs> No, it's, it's just, they're uh, two people. They're two people, conjoined twins. Yeah. Right. So these it's just a, they just happen to have a similar taste in clothes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, so there's, yeah, they were doing all right, and it all went wrong when he crossed the road, got run over. The lad with two heads got run over. That's it. <laughs> what? How is that? How is that cheeky freak of the week? Just, beca just because just because he got my interest, and I kind of thought, why didn't he just look both ways? <laughs> <laughs> I I'm intrigued to know. Why how you... wasn't he looking both ways? I'm oh. intrigued to know how you uh, how you get run over. And what was it, 1629? Yeah. Well, it's horses awesome, and that, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, why wasn't he looking both ways? <laughs> Carl, Carl Pilkington, you are a genius. <laughs> Because you're around forever then, aren't you? Once you're a ghost, that's it. So the idea of being blind when you're alive, you go, well, all right, then maybe in the afterlife I might be treated to a pair of eyes. 
but the fact of wandering about, dead for years, bumping into stuff. <laughs> So, oh, that's an amazing image! So I didn't tick that box. <laughs> but, but, but why, I don't understand, in your theory of the afterlife, why is it that you, you ghost, you, this ghostly car, why can he survive without a heart, but he can't survive without eyes? What, why, do you see what I mean? Surely if you're this ghostly apparition, you can just see everything and you can do everything. You don't need no, because, the, the body no, because, because you're a ghost. Think, yeah, I know, but I think it, when you're a ghost, Say like how they've seen ghosts in, um... Right, could I just say now for any listeners, um, this is not the thoughts and beliefs of the management. There is no such thing as ghosts. I do not believe in ghosts. I do not believe in ESP or any mumbo-jumbo. Carry on, Carl. So when there's a ghost, yeah. When, when, you know, when they see ghosts in, like, old castles and stuff. Mm. Yeah. They've had their head cut off because they've been up to no good, right, years ago. But they're carrying it around normally under their arm. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't reattached itself. So if you take the eyes out... But Carl, how is this ghostly creature able to function? It's, it doesn't have its head on anyway. It's carrying it under its arm. So the suspicion is it doesn't need its head. No, it, it does. It just happens it, to be carrying it around because it, no, it you know, wants to keep it with it. The ghost it, is always in the last condition that it was in when it was in... Oh, what, who I makes these rules? The way you are in your last bit of life is how you are as a ghost forever. Even in the fashion. Like I say, the ghosts that you see never wear modern clothes, so they, it's always the Victorian stuff. <laughs> Now, God. if they could change it, they would, but they can't because they stuck with it. So that's why did you see cavemen eyes. ghosts? When did ghosts start? They didn't kick in till about eighteen thirty, did they? What if you die when you're having a rectal examination? Are you always bent forward with your trousers around your ankles and someone's finger up your ass? But why would you die when you're having that done? That's why I'm not having it done. If that's you no, 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 no. But you, it, it might have both been suddenly um, killed in a in a terrible disaster. Yeah, a meteorite hit you. That's when you get the moaning ghosts, isn't it? That's the other ones who aren't happy. So you're going round, bent forward, going, you've got oh. a doctor's finger up your ass, yeah. and what are you doing? You're sort of going, oh. And that's when you have to get the vicar round. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> they, they have to put you to, to rest and what have you, don't they? And what does a vicar do when he's going, are you go so I, so I get the vicar round, it's years later, it's a hundred years later, you're, 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 you're around this doctor's surgery and there's people coming, and the doctor there, the new doctor there, and it's, it's 2073, and they, they go, Vicar, vicar. They go, vicar. There's a, there's a, a strange ghostly apparition. It's, it looks like an old doctor, right? And he's got his fingers up. This sort of like little. It's like a chimpanzee, but with a shaved head. No, no. But the doctor wouldn't be. Are you saying the doctor dies as yeah, well? Yeah, they both, both, yeah. You both yeah, die. You die at the same time with his finger up your ass. And so you're forever, you're forever having a little rectal examination with your little trousers around your ankles. Well, that's when it'd be best not to have your eyes. <laughs> Rick, I know this is something you always get excited about. It's Carl's diary. Can we have a jingle? I don't believe it! He's got a really good! <laughs> Thank you very much. Woke up to the news about an elephant in India that had sore feet, so the locals have made it a big pair of slippers. Tried to look online for a picture, but I couldn't find anything. Sure, they've made it two pairs of slippers. Uh, well, I'm only going by the facts in the diary, Rick, and I would have thought that they were absolutely bona fide and fact-checked and completely <laughs> yeah. accurate. I'd be very yeah. surprised if there's any mistakes in here. <laughs> uh, I'm sure they've done this for an elephant before. Uh, I thought elephants have bad memories. No, well, no, But fair enough. I thought elephants have bad memories. If they have, I'm guessing it's gonna keep forgetting where it's left them. I mean, just to get the... if it's a myth, the myth completely wrong. Yeah. Elephants well, never forget. That's the saying. Not they always forget, so you can buy them slippers every year. Carl says, I haven't had a pair of slippers for years. He thinks they're dying out. No, I love slippers. I love a pair of slippers, I love mate. a pair of slippers, mate. Just wear socks. Oh, oh slidey on a car. No. Slidey on a, on a piece of lino. I know. And what about if you, you know, maybe opening a, a, a brand new box of thumbtacks? <laughs> you drop them all over the floor, you're trying to pick them up. Rick, I've got to pop across the road to get some milk. But well, it's, it's right opposite. I'm surely not going to go in my socks, though. I? I don't want to put on the shoes, it's mad. No, no, no. Pop some slippers on. <laughs> oh, perfect, yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't go out in your slippers. Why not? Just across the street, mate, to get some milk. Because they're inside shoes. You don't go rowing about on tarmac in slippers. That's basic. But you don't have any slippers, so no, you're just you... tiptoeing across the street. You know, I put you... my shoes on. But you can, you can, you can, you can pop out and get the uh, the, the paper and you know the, the bottle of milk. Can't you in the slippers without without any harm done? No. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> That'll make it into the diary. Tried to have a shower, but there was no water. <laughs> I love 
<laughs> when he calls me and things go yeah. wrong with the flat. But I like the fact that he tried to have a, he tried to have a shower but there's no water. How long did it take you before you realised <laughs> he was there for 20 minutes? Yeah, after 20 minutes, it's Suzanne, should I be dry? <laughs> yeah, I'm freezing cold. Yeah, no, no, you should, you should be sort of wet and warm. <laughs> right, there's no water then. <laughs> Brilliant. I called the service charge people, but no one was about. Looked outside, but couldn't see any work going on. Great, innit? In India, they can sort out elephants with shoes. In London, we have no water. <laughs> <laughs> Hung about for a bit, but still no sign of any water. Brush my teeth just using the paste, and used the little bit that was in the kettle to have a wash. I was pretty chuffed that I thought of using that. Suzanne was a bit annoyed because she wanted a cup of tea. Uh she said, go across the road and buy a big bottle of water. Not in your socks. Pop some slippers on. Go across the road and buy a big bottle of water, she said. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You had a wash using the water that's in the in bottom the of the kettle. Yeah, well, that's clean, isn't it? But how much? There's only a little drop in there. No, it's a big kettle. So what, did you just wash your face? Yeah. So you didn't, you didn't wash your body or anything? Your genitals well, were You couldn't, could you? You've got to look at what, what you can do with the water available. People in Africa and that shot of water aren't wasting it, so no. The feet are a bit dirty. They drink it. What do you mean? Add a look online to see what's been going on. Scientists say that Everest, brackets, the mountain, just in case you've confused that with any other Everests. Maybe the, uh, double glazing people. Yeah. You say that, pe scientists say that Everest has grown a bit. The way they were talking about it, you'd have thought it's grown loads. It's only inches. No, isn't that... They found out that it's actually a couple of inches taller than they first thought because their methods of measuring are more accurate than they were 20 years ago. So it's bigger than they thought it was. It hasn't grown. No, I just think what's happened is at the bottom, because of like people, keep, people are always climbing up it, aren't they? Right? Yeah. So they're sort of wearing away the Don't soil at the bottom. It's all rubbish. So, so they also, just push it down. it's, it's just also just measured push... against sea level. It's not measured about when you get, otherwise they'd just dig a big hole, wouldn't they, and go, right, it's down to here. If the, the, the no, peak does, is measured at, at against the, the day, sea though, level. Does it matter at the end of the day? No, but it's just nice to know, isn't it? Yeah, but that's all, I, what I'm saying is we don't need to know that. It's not going to put anyone off. Like Brian Blessed, who's always climbing up there for fun. He's not going to go, oh, I could handle it last year, but oh, two more inches. Forget that. Going to be shattered. <laughs> so don't, don't worry about it. It doesn't matter how big it is. Something else, though, that's happened since, right? Um, they were climbing up there and someone got near the top and uh, they were sort of climbing up like that, holding the cliff edge and that. And they'd forgotten the flag, that we go back. No, the, the hand hit the bit of rock and it went like, ding. Like, what's that? Ding, ding. Put another hand up, ding, ding. Piano under there. They don't know how it's got there. Right, you're talking shit again. Someone's been tipping. Well, all <laughs> oh, right. Up Everest. Okay. The council won't even take away your washing machine unless you pay them. They're I mean, not going to sneak up Everest. No, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the council won't take anything. People are going, what can we do with this? Oh, yeah. Well, I'll just, just, I'll tell you what, yeah. just sneak up Everest. It'll take you nine days <laughs> and it may, you may die, but just pop it up on Everest. Well, I know for a fact that you've confused, you've confused a few things there because I think the, the piano being found was actually somewhere in Scotland, some kind of moor in Scotland, and they found a piano up there yeah. and everyone said, I don't understand, how's the piano doing up here? And it turned out that some guy, one of these people who like tries to break world records, Hoax, had dragged, oh, dragged right. a piano up there as some kind of feat of endurance, yeah. but thought, I'll be damned if I'm going to take it back again, and just left it up there. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, bloody tipping or aliens or anything. Some scientists have come up with a cure for bird flu. It's somewhat to do with some stuff in horses. They gave the flu to a mouse and then injected it and it's well again. I think we should stop coming up with cures for things as the germs are just getting stronger and stronger. I reckon by 2020, germs will be so big that we will be able to see them in the air. They will no longer be little particles. You wouldn't swallow one. If you did, it won't be the germ that will kill you. You'll just choke to death. I think that's, that's how we'll die in the future. Choking on enormous giant on germs. germs. And then what, they'll be like rampaging around the cities, will they you, like... I'll tell you just, what though, right, no, I'm getting worried now because the stuff he believes and thinks of, uh, it, 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 I mean, it could be mental. Do you know what I mean though? Like a proper paranoid sort of, it, one of those people with a suit going to live in a loft covered in tin foil. Yeah. Right? Um, and uh, pages of the Bible all the way around the... Yeah, and yeah. Suzanne's having to put on a, some sort of spacesuit to come in and give him his beans on toast. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to have to polish each bean. That's, what, that's yeah. what scientists do, isn't it? They just sort of think, of think ahead of everyone else. That's what I'm doing. And the weird thing is, right, Steve, um, sometime last week, um, there was a science piece which was close to what I'd already said. Yeah. That they've got some germs sure. that like eating sugar, right? 
They stick them in a lunchbox with a chocolate bar. Within an hour, it was gone. Right? And they say now these germs love chocolate and Did stuff. this scientist leave it near this fat scientist that works in the same laboratory? And he went, it's unbelievable. Uh, he said, Ted, he went, what? <laughs> right, I put the chocolate bar in here with the germ. I came, it's gone. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, that's brilliant, that. Do it again. What? Do it again. Leave another one, see if it happens again. So in the future, you're running around and germs are... Eating chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not science, that's Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got some... See the difference where I, I named the species, explained it slightly, told you an interesting fact, mm -hmm. as opposed to, there's this monkey, right? And, uh... Look at him looking it's at you. Yeah, it's... It's not interested in <laughs> Can I tell you now, can I try and describe for people the face that Carl has? I'll tell you what it's like, it's like if you draw, um, some eyes and nose and a mouth, on a balloon, and then inflate it to about half full. <laughs> That's what Carl's face looks like. That's what his head looks like. He looks like a face you've drawn on a balloon. Very small, the rest of the head huge. It's, it's just that like today I'm a, I'm a bit tired, right? Mm. That's one thing. Why are you a bit tired? I just haven't been sleeping, right? Why not? I don't know, I've got a lot going on in my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if this would be like The Simpsons, if we could actually look in there, there would be two monkeys grooming yeah. you. Uh, Plus you've, you've been talking about like, Stuff that I can't relate to and that, so I'm- What, um, writing poetry? Like what? Reading books. Yeah, what? doing poetry and stuff. I never did any of that. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? At, well, at school they didn't- they didn't bother. They tried to get us to write more, right? <laughs> right. By, uh Giving you a pen? Well, they, they used to give us these school diaries. Yeah. Little- little red book. <laughs> and it was a way that they kept an eye on what you were doing out of school hours. Right. right? So some kids would write down, you know- <laughs> Stole a bike, yeah, burnt a well, house down. Yeah. But when I was at school, around that sort of twelve age, I, I didn't get up to much. You have no money. There's no you can do. So every night it was the same thing. I'd get home, and you, I'd have to I'd have to go to the shop, right, and get some potatoes and some bread every mm -hmm. night, right. And I kept taking this into school. Sorry, what was it? Dublin in the 17th century. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean every day you went to the shops and got potatoes and bread? <laughs> That's- that's kind of what I had to get all the time. That's, <laughs> what, that's what we had. Why? What did you have? Chip sandwiches? <laughs> yeah. Right, and, so uh, you went to the- yeah, you went there. So I kept- With I kept your hoop and stick. Yeah, I kept putting that in the diary, you know, every night saying, <laughs> went, to, went to U-Phase. That was the name of the shop. Yeah. <laughs> what is it called? U-Phase. What is it? U or you? Like H-U-G-H Phase. H-U-G-H, yeah. Oh, is that was his name? U-Phase, right? right. You used yeah. to go there. Get the potatoes and bread, bread and that. I have to find someone who's named a shop after themselves. <laughs> I'm not going to say what we sell. It's named after me or nothing, or I'm not opening. <laughs> Mainly potatoes and bread. Oh, yeah. White sliced loaves, King Edwards. And the teacher used to always say, just write something different in there. Make something up. Because yeah. like you know, Monday, Tuesday, all the way through to Friday, every night it was just went to you phase. Yeah. <laughs> went to That's you. So you sort of, you, you think Are you sure, sure it wasn't an advert? Sure it wasn't paying you to say, uh, get my name in the book? <laughs> yeah. The only t the only time that it changed and she said, oh, that's that's made it a bit more interesting, was when it was my birthday and I had to buy a cake. Potatoes and a cake. And she said, oh, that's good. Yeah. That was my 13th birthday. My mum said, I got home from school, she said, oh, you're 13 today. Teenager, big, big turnover. Go and get a cake. That's your experience of writing? No, what? Well, no, that's of, your yeah. experience of your thirteenth birthday. Oh, by the way, you're thirteen today. Go and get a cake. Yeah, brilliant. Big surprise. Was yeah. it a big surprise? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is brilliant. So I love it. That's that the only sort of writing. Well, yeah. and they never asked you to write essays or stories. Did anything? you never write a story or a poem or a the stories I did earlier on? Were, you know, you, you made them up, but it was that thing that I'd, I'd always end them with, <laughs> and an alarm went off, and it was all a dream. Every right. single one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they didn't- they didn't- I mean, it was a bit of a- <laughs> I, bit of a I bought some potatoes and some <laughs> <Yeah>. bread, but <laughs> I went from and it was all a dream. No, 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 no. Then I went to Johnson and bought some potatoes and yeah. bread. But did- did you ever do anything that write about an adventure when you were a spaceman, or you were in- you know, you were, uh, a cowboy, or- No? Uh, all the teachers, like, had scams going on, so like, <laughs> in English, right, <laughs> you'd go in there and the teacher would say, right, what we're doing today is- Got a load of brochures from Thompson, but they say like 1983 on the front. So I've got a load of stickers here that say 1984. Let's see how many you can do in half an hour. 
You are joking. Did you go I'm... to school with Oliver Twist? <laughs> Sorry, you are joking. I'm not, that's what they did. So the teacher must have been getting like a freebie or something for helping them out. You- is this- Honest, honestly, yeah, that's what it's from. That is fantastic. They were all at it. They were all- <laughs> they Other than Mr. Fagan, you had- Yeah. <laughs> and then when they saw Karate Kid, they had uh, every kid washing their car going, wax on, wax off, hurry yeah. up. Yeah. I'm teaching. I'm teaching you something. Wax on, wax off, paint the fence. So I'm just saying, you know, that's- that's why I'm a bit quiet, cause you're talking about stuff I can't- Can't relate to. And why- and why didn't you sleep last night? I'm just- I, I haven't slept well for, for- since I was about twelve. <laughs> Do you sleep well, Steve? <laughs> wait, 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 you can't let that go! I haven't slept well since I was twelve. What, what do, do you know, mean? Do you know, like, a proper- I used to love going to bed as, as like, a kid. Yeah. Whereas now it's like, oh, am I gonna sleep tonight? And, and I sort of wake up about four times. Right. Whereas when you're a kid, I remember really loving, like, going to bed. I'd, mm. I, what, there was one time where I actually laughed. Myself to sleep because I couldn't believe me luck. Is there something wrong with him? What do you mean you, do you laugh? Know, yourself? Have you ever had it when you're when you're really tired and you get in bed and the pillars feel yeah, it's all cold. Yeah, and, and it's like I can't believe this. Yeah, and I, I, it happened twice. Once when I just went to bed and I was really looking forward to it, and also when I, I helped my dad out once, like through the night, he worked at like at this paper company, right? And uh, <laughs> I helped him out and I got in at about four in the morning with him, got in bed. And I just was like, I, had, I, I was laughing my head off. I had to put the pillow over my head because I, I couldn't believe me luck. Like I, I was like, oh, this is great, this, and going to sleep. I, I just have <laughs> to say, life up north is so extraordinary. No, but you must be the easiest kid in the world to please. No wonder she knew she could just go get a cake. It's sort of like, uh, what, what was he expecting? We were say he were expecting an extra hour in bed, <laughs> yeah. but we got him cake as well. <laughs> go I to bed love without that. any supper. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. It, your just, own it, bed. How long was it before you got your own- what did you, just, you used to do before? Just some straw in the corner? No, it's just that- that thing of when you're really tired and- And do you ever do this with Suzanne though? Do you ever laugh yourself to sleep with her? <sighs> no, that's what I mean. She can't sleep because you're chuckling away. I'm just- I don't know what's up with me. I've got a lot going on. <laughs> what, what- what- what do you mean you've got a lot I going on? I don't know, I was talking to the security bloke before saying, do you sleep? <laughs> Have you got much going on in your head and stuff and- I don't know. Yeah, well, he wasn't insulted by that, I'm sure. Going up to someone and going, have you got a lot going on in your head? That oh, is brilliant. It I've worries me. It's interesting that um, your lack of sleep coincides with the diaries and the uh, the writing of the bread and potato story every day. I don't know if once you had that responsibility. Why don't you every night go to Hugh Fay's, get some bread and potatoes, you don't have to eat them, then go to bed and I think you'll be chuckling yourself to sleep <laughs> in no time. <laughs> um, I'm stunned at Carl's rudeness. Okay, that's badly drawn, boy. By the way, all possibilities. There's a lovely chap just calls in saying about sounds and Carl because the records ended. He doesn't say, "Oh, I've got to go." The records ended. He went, "Yeah," and he but so he's cut him still off. there. Well, cut him off. He's well, just check if he's still there. He doesn't want to be on radio. He said he didn't want to be I'm on the radio, still, but I think he should apologise. I'm still here. Hello. Hello. Right. I'm still. I did ask not to be put live on radio because I get very embarrassed. No, don't but worry. All we want to do is, is we just wanted to apologise for Carl's curtness and his rudeness. No, all I want to say is the station is good because you you couldn't have a worse slot on a Saturday afternoon, right? Because the youngsters are in the boozers, the older fellas are doing the punting, the racing, the football, and whatever. The thing is, the state you play. If you want, if you want to get number one, this and is XFM, not radio two. If you want to be, if you want to be the top, all you've got to do is start playing Natalia and Bragley and this and that and have your audience with one puke of hair between four legs, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. you now, that's why I don't want to go live on radio. But you are dead, uh, d uh, d when, when Christian got a little bit sick about being 13, then he got to go, whatever. Uh, y y you're the soundest station in the area, you cover, I don't like all the stuff you play, the, the station plays, but it, you're actually doing what's there. Thank and you very you what, much. You keep going, you keep going, persevere. And, and you're ma it's well worth listening to anyway, okay? Thank otherwise you, cheers. I uh, otherwise I wouldn't- Can you hear it. us? <laughs> Thank you, bye! Dead sound, mate. Be careful, yeah? I mean, I can see why you cut him off. <laughs> no, stop it! Man right. alive! We've had so many calls. Carl was getting annoyed, there were so many calls. And, uh, we've had suggestions from, uh, Ned saying talk about Jimmy Savile. Uh, John in North London. Um, I've just got John in North London. What does he want us to talk about? Oh, I've forgotten. Becca from Liverpool wants to talk about Tracy Emin and Damien Hurst. Art, um, 
Paul Andrews, your mum called, stop calling her, telling her to listen to XFM. Yes, you, Paul Andrews, is about thirty-eight, at home with your wife and kids. Your mum just called in. Um, uh, I think uh, someone wanted amazing monkey facts. I can't even do this right, can I? Uh, to be honest with you, last week we were slagging off Carl as being the weak link in this show. <laughs> I think it's clear <laughs> what the weak link is. Um, oh God, who's the bloke who wants to Haley to go with him to X Men? See, I shouldn't make notes. What's <laughs> wrong with you? <laughs> if you didn't spend so much time squeezing his head and eating pies, we might get uh, something done.